Fire in the hole. Now on this guy, on this one here. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and start talking about a classic physics um, problem dealing with the ballistic pendulum. Okay. Ballistics have to do with firearms or bullets and trying to figure out speeds and different things like that. So when we talk about a ballistic pendulum, that's all we're talking about is another way to measure the speed of a projectile. Okay. Now if you guys could watch this, this would work for arrows. And this sometimes shows up in a lot of, uh, how do we say it, sports projects because it has a lot of applicability to a lot of the things we've been doing. Okay. So, guys, what a ballistic pendulum is is basically, I forgot to draw the bullet here, we have the bullet coming in at some sort of velocity flying towards the ballistic pendulum. Okay? The ballistic pendulum, we know its mass and we know the mass of the bullet and what the bullet does is we put in a material like clay or something where the bullet is going to go in and totally lodge into the ballistic pendulum. Okay? When it lodges into the ballistic pendulum, we all know that the momentum is going to be conserved and it's going to pull, give this an initial velocity with, now that the bullet's stuck in it and it's going to swing up to a certain height. Does that make sense? Okay. If we can measure that height, then we can use that to start calculating some pretty cool stuff, ultimately getting back to where we calculate the velocity of the bullet. Now, if you'll notice, I've kind of drawn this height as a little bit of a it looks kind of off, but what I did is I tried to draw where the center of mass was. And so the center of mass of the block and the block and the bullet has changed um, vertically upward 0.25 meters at the very top of the swing. Does this make sense? Okay. And we can measure that um, using different methods, and we'll look at that in a second. Okay. Um, if we go about this problem, it's basically using the conservation of energy and the conservation of momentum to solve a pretty cool problem. If you guys look at this, I think it'll, it'll uh, make sense to you. The potential energy of the block and the bullet at the very top of its swing right here is going to be equal to mgh. Okay? I have to have the mass of the wood plus the bullet here just so we know they're together. So the mass of those th two things together is going to be 5.05 kilograms. Velocity, uh, the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, and the height that the block went up is 0.25 meters. So the potential energy of the block and the bullet at its very maximum height is going to be 12.3725 joules. That should be pretty straightforward. Everybody see that? Okay, that's just a potential energy problem. The law, the principle of conservation of energy, says that the amount of energy that it has up here in potential energy. Well, what it says is the total energy here equals the total energy there. But since up here the only kind of energy we, we have is potential, the potential energy at the top has to be equal to the amount of kinetic energy we had at the bottom. Does that make sense? Okay. So, potential energy top, kinetic energy bottom. We take our 12.3725, set it equal to 1 half mv squared. Now you'll notice I put in the wood plus the block and the wood plus the block because we're talking about this system right here that's stuck together now. And I can then plug in our mass, 5.05, and solve for the velocity of the wood plus the block. Initially, right here when the bullet hit it and it started its path upward. Does that make sense? Okay. So we are using the principle of conservation of energy to figure out how fast the block would be moving the instant that the bullet hit it and it started to move up. Okay. Once we know that, we can then come over here to the principle of conservation of momentum and we can utilize the fact that we know the momentum before the collision is going to equal the momentum after. And if we look at it, guys, before the collision, we have a bullet flying in and a wood block sitting there. So you'll notice I have the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet, and then the mass of the wood times the velocity of the wood. But since the wood is stationary, its velocity is zero, which basically makes that term go away. Okay. Now we did an example of this before where we threw something at the person sitting on the cart and they stuck together. 
after the collision, since they're stuck together in an inelastic collision, we're going to take the mass of the combined two things times the velocity of the combined two things. And uh, the two masses added together are 5 plus 0 0.05, so 5.05 .05 times the velocity of that system when it's moving away, which we calculated already. And that gives us our momentum after the collision of the bullet and the block. That comes out to be 11.17865. The only unknown we have on this side of the equation is the velocity of the bullet. And therefore, we can go ahead and divide both sides by 0 0.05 and come up with an initial velocity of that bullet. Okay. Which is kind of another cool way, before you had a thing like a chronograph where there were lasers and it could time and trigger those lasers of how fast you could figure out how bullets were hit. Okay, before we had that technology. So, pretty classic experiment of, uh, well, an example of conservation of energy, conservation of momentum to solve a pretty cool real world problem. If we had a test, if we had another way to look at this, guys, one of the things I could give you is I could give you the velocity of the bullet and ask you to figure out how high this goes up. And if I did something like that, we're just working this problem basically in reverse. If you knew the velocity of the bullet and you knew the mass of this, you could use the principle of conservation of momentum to then figure out how fast the block would be going, the block and the bullet would be going. If you know how fast they're going, you know how much kinetic energy they have, and if you know how much kinetic energy they have, you should be able to figure out how high they would go um, and just work the problem backwards. Does that make sense?